Now, it's time to challenge some stereotypes about men. I mean, it's, a, it's about time. I'm sick of being treated as a sex object. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Why Men Fake It. It's a new book. As the title suggests, it reveals some unexpected facts about how blokes behave in the bedroom. The author is Dr. Abraham Morgenthaler, who is a professor of urology at Harvard Medical School, and he joins us now. Abraham, welcome to Weekend Sunrise. I'm just going to yeah, thank you very much. I'm going to say this straight out. I don't. I don't believe that this is possible. That men can really fake it. Nor do I actually. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say this? Isn't it amazing? So listen, I've been doing this work for 25 years with guys, and when this 25-year-old man came into my office about six years ago, I had never heard of such a thing in my life either. So this was a guy who had trouble finishing during sex. And when he fell in love with this girl, he started feeling badly that she, about, that she was feeling bad about herself. So to make her feel uh -huh. better, he started faking it. And since, I, I mean, I was shocked. I'd never heard of it myself. Since I heard that story and I wrote this book, Why Men Fake It, and I've been talking to people, more and more people tell me their story of guys faking it. It's real. Well, there you go. Poor devils. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, how much do you think, um, you know, men's sense of, of sexual self is bound up in pleasing their partner, Doctor? Well, I'm so glad you asked me that because the reason that guys fake it, it turns out, is actually to try and be good and noble. And I think that in the areas that men have their worst reputation, where they're supposed to be selfish and just concerned about themselves and they don't care about their partner. What I see in my exam room when people sort of let their guard down is exactly the opposite. Men want to be providers, mm. sexual mm. providers. Let me give you an example. 27-year-old man, patient of mine, is paraplegic. He comes in in his wheelchair, he's married, he can't have sex. Mm -hmm. I treat him so he can. And when he comes back and follow up, he says, Doctor, thank you so much. My wife is happy. I feel like a man again. Nice. And I think most people hear that story and they think, well, he feels like a, guy, he feels like a man because he's having sex. Guys like sex. But the kicker in the story is this is a guy who doesn't feel anything from his waist down. Yep. Mm. Okay, so... It's not about him. Okay, you like so what, something what you're... Guys like sex, I'm taking that <laughs> So what you're seeing in your exam room, uh, do you think that the role... That you, men's and women's roles have, have sort of... Uh, blended a little bit. They're not so. We're, not, we're certainly not traditional. They're not so polar anymore. Yes, we're, they're not traditional anymore. As women are becoming more powerful and more able to ask for what they want and more demanding, is that affecting men? Do you think? Absolutely. I think it's getting harder and harder for guys to know what it is to be a man these days. It's. It, we're done with the time when the guy can assume he's just going to be the provider for his girlfriend or wife or family, right? Because women are, at, they've taken that role, they're perfectly capable. And I think it puts more emphasis or more pressure on the guy to actually be a provider, if you will, in the bedroom. And the tragedy, if you, <laughs> the tragedy or the difficulty is guys have a lot of problems there. So 52% of men in American studies some years ago showed that men between, 52% of men between the ages of 40 and 70 have mm -hmm. some degree of erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. That's a huge number. 20% yeah. of men of all age groups have premature or quick ejaculation. And about a third of men over the age of 45 have low levels of testosterone that can affect desire and performance. So the guys have a lot of troubles. But in terms of how men and women are working these days, Guys are trying their darndest to be great for the women. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so you talk about these these um, uh, difficulties that men have. I mean, is there a, a, a cure for each of these these problems that they perceive themselves to have? There are treatments for all of them. Absolutely, men with low testosterone can be treated with very good success rates. ED, or erectile dysfunction, of course, everybody knows about the pills, and even if the pills don't work, we have other treatments, and uh, there are treatments for, for uh, early orgasm, if you will, too. 
So absolutely, listen, for women who are watching, if yes. your guy is having a problem in the bedroom, by all means, don't think it's you. Go mm -hmm. get him to the doctor because there's a good chance not only will he be better and things will be more fun, but how the, the key thing is the mind of man is tied in so closely with how he does and feels about himself sexually. Mm. Mm. What's your message when a guy to, to women? Have, what, do, should we take it, I mean, outside of the bedroom, should we take it easier on men a little mm. bit at the moment? Yeah. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> of, co of course you should. So here's the thing. Guys have become a punchline for jokes. We've been having this conversation about women and women's bodies and all that for about 40 years, and guys have really been silent. Mm. There's been nothing equivalent for this. And I think in the absence of guys speaking up for themselves and what's about great about men, I think we've filled the void with a lot of negative stereotypes. And I, th it, I think that we have to, I think women really want to know that in their heart, guys want a lot of the same things that they do. Mm -hmm. Men and women both want close connection. They want to be accepted and valued for who they are. Right. Well, there you go. On that note. There's a void waiting to be filled. Thank very you, Doctor. It's very interesting indeed.